Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO The Last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Daniel Kamslava. But right now, we gotta talk about the end of the revolt. In the end, the victory in the field had broken the back of the famed Siberian Black Army. The anarchist soldiers had fought long and hard when their situation had grown impossible, but however, the SBA lost men as fast as melting spring snow. The Tomskian offensive, combined with Shapshnikov's suggested land reforms and food delivery, had done much to peel away communes from the Black Army. The surrender of General Stepanov and his men had rendered the Black Army a remnants into a determined insurrection. Tom's generals urged their men on isolating hostile communes and slowly forming a grid of pacified territory within the region. The capture of Councilor Suida was the Republican Army's highest priority, a culmination to the final campaign to eradicate anarchist ideology. The dedicated anarchist ideologue remained defiant to the end, unwilling to accept the offer of amnesty. Suida died with his last companions, cornered in a forest safe house in the north. The men and women fought to the last bullet, refusing to grant the Republican forces any legitimacy. Uh, the martyrdom of Suida echoed throughout the former t free territory, and for a moment it seemed that insurrection might be sparked anew, but as loved as the council had been, the communes throughout the region were exhausted by decadent conflict. The Republican army took care to listen to their grievances and brought food for the poorest. Perhaps their leader would have cast his judgment on them for willingly accepting servitude to the invading state. The peasants hoped <clears throat> that the council would have found in himself the strength to forgive them. General Stepanov's trial is due to begin soon. He's expected to argue that he merely wanted to protect the local citizens from endless violence, as he had all other, or merely wanted to protect local citizens from endless violence, and all as had all other captured separatists in Tomsk. Rumors abound of a reduced sentence meant to reward him for agreeing to end the bloodshed and give back to the eastern territories a sense of normalcy. The Republic forgives, but do does not forget. We lose some stability, but that's okay. We have a hundred uh, political power just because. Well, I decided to do. Was it this one? Increase production was. I want more growth. I always want more growth. We get a little more discontent. No one cares, and then you get more factory output. That's it's just yes, fifty percent more construction speed, twenty one percent more factory output. That is very nice. And of course, we got to work on this a whole bunch too, so we can only spend so much political power here. But uh, we are we're at war again because they love going to war with us. So we'll try to beat the crap out of them as best we can. Actually, taking here probably would have been best, but whatever. Get here, then we can go here and, and circle this division, and kill it off. We just gotta be smart how we attack enemies. That's all. And then sometimes I'm not always smart. But we have some other comps to go through as well. Uh, anything over there? I' not too concerned about that stuff. Build an arm factory. Eh, eh, infantry. Oh, this would be bad actually for getting the next research stuff done. But we've got to save political power for coring stuff as well as um, getting more loot. But just for the next stage of warlordism. So where are we for equipment actually? We're actually really well here. Expert equipment. Um, eleven. So in like three months, we'll have it done. So, it's best not to do equipment now. Let's, how, what about schools or research facilities? Re Ooh, research facilities really bad. Academic base, which is better. Outdated research. You, get, you lose political power, actually. You get more research speed. And basic literacy. Oh, no. Oh, no. You definitely want to get to school. Schools are extremely important. Cool. That's fine. Well, so now that you do that, there you go. Do the best you can. Go there. Kill them all off. Win. Succeed. You can circle the division. Kill them all off. Not bad overall, but yes. A couple comments include play as Syndicalist India in Kaiserreich, which actually I've never done. I don't think I've ever played as India. I've said that before, but I don't think I've ever played as India before. And then play as Kaganovich in Tino, which I think I have played as Kaganovich. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I played as, as him already. But maybe some other time again. Yeah. Oh, we still have to do a war plan in Shukola. Oh, no. Oh. Well, that's fine, whatever. We don't get that war sport, but that's alright. Whatever. Warlord of Vilma, of course, would be very nice. And do we have any debt? No, we don't. We actually get a surplus still. Not bad. There you go. Here, don't don't lose that stuff here. We defend for now, and then we'll do a, an attack. I don't want to lose too many guys. Get the guys on the front first, and then we'll just do a kind of a generic attack, and have a great time. Have a great great time. Another comment includes: um, out of all the regions in Russia to reunite Russia, Central Siberia is probably the most realistic one with the industry and the manpower. Maybe, maybe over here, maybe over here, maybe as well, but like. Definitely, Central Siberia is pretty good. Pretty darn good. Yeah, we're, we're really out of equipment, though. Especially Artie. But well, we already put three, I think. Ooh, we're making some gas. Nice. And some fighters, too. We have three military factories down here, which is pretty good already. So, Not bad overall. I do want to use some of that planning that we do get first. Ah, uh, go offensive. Why not? Be more aggressive. Ah, right. oh, so we just go in here anyway. anyways. There you go. There you go. Do the best you can. I do want to try a general attack, but that sounds like a really bad idea. How strong are these guys? Uh, they're honestly not that strong. They're a lot weaker than I thought they would be. Yeah, you should be able to win. Should be good. More budget increases. After this one, 
Uh, you know what? You can just try that. Screw it. Just go ahead. Try it. Nice. Another division. Very good. Well, we got the capital now. Oh, we got more naval XP. Don't think we'll really need it. We'll probably go Green Navy, honestly. Yay. Kaizo? You're attacking there, which means we could do better here, too. I'm not sure I pronounce Kizil. Oh, we need some political power to help unite uh, and core this territory as well, which would be good. And someone asks, how many Russian paths are there for TNO? There's a lot of Russian paths, because there's a lot of different Russian nations, or Russian state warlords. And beyond the warlords, each one has at least one or two different paths, so it's quite a few. Very nice. How many losses have we taken? That's about a thousand grease palms. This is in carte blanche to the fiscal management of the party of Tomsk. Old Pastor Nack himself struggled in vain to decouple the tangled web of power and money that cur curled like old cobwebs around his precious democratic experiment. In his last years, he gave up trying, and the result has been a deeply entrenched corruption that is nearly unnoticeable if one does not look too quickly. Unfortunately for Tomsk, of course. Oh, I'll do that one, too. Uh, one of the areas where this corruption is very noticeable is the drug trade. It is also the single biggest source of illegal income in the Republic. And when a big enough barrel is offered, the pork will flow uninvited. It is dock... As the party representative stops under the dock, its wooden planks creaking with age, it looks around in annoyance. This was, to put it bluntly, a piss poor choice of venue for the company, and waits in the prearranged signal. The representative does is off, sitting there dreaming of the lights of the city as a dock surrounds him. He nearly misses the go ahead before he wakes, cursing his narcoplactic tendencies. Above him, a harsh red glow of flare. A peek at the crumpled map, and the representative begins navigating the swamps of the area. Occasionally swearing his local fawn and make half-hearted passes at his clothing. After what seems like an eternity walking, he finds a crate. Right underneath the flares glow just as promised. With the bundles of crash inside, the smell of heroin still sharp on the papered surface, as the representative checks bill after bill for the correct watermarks and insignia. About ten yards from a gun, tr safety, trigger, or gun safety trigger clicks in the feet trees. The body's found three days later. Oh boy. But my friends, we have won. A new industrial system. Um, I think it was one yesterday, so if you want to do this again, please go right ahead. Yay. Give it a little bit of time before we do anything else here. Nice. Yes, we won. Oh, yeah, we can do that. And I apologize for any of the extra sounds that happened in the background. Dirty business. The revelation that a mid-level modernist functionary was involved in drug smuggling is not in itself shocking. It was so deliberately non-shocking that the entire modernist party from Sakharov all the way down makes a concerted effort both to shake their heads in regret and to look the other way. What is shocking that is that the Bastelards, the humanists, and Decembrists do the exact same thing. The entirety of Russian government in Tomsk begins to quietly distance themselves at exactly the same speed, even those elements of it that should have left at the chance to attack the rivals. The press is quick to catch on, and quickly accusations begin to spread of something bigger than an individual smuggling ring. Who is involved, to be more accurate? Who is not involved? As a civility of democracy strains and tears itself, police investigations in the Kargasovsky Fishing Company proven conclusive, the crate itself, and many others found in the modernist ring bear the logo of the company, but there is no commercial for taxable evidence of its existence. Worse, it is as if all those who worked with the company wore shrouds while doing so, as witnesses recall the next to nothing about their mysterious partners. The investigation comes to a halt and is eventually tied up, called off. In far away, Kaisel, a bureaucrat sighs off in the concluding notes of a dossier and tosses out into the open fire next to him. The stench of burning heroin is there for an instant, and then the, ear, the flame sears through the fragile paperwork, and the smell dissipates. Just another day in the infiltration department. Now, we're going to go and scan for loot. We're not going to click on this one because I want to be able to do one more of these again. So, we're still integrating two of them, but a new central superior. Oh, look at that. Carmes wrote through the weekly, his weekly report. It was definitely devoid of the surprise. The fantastic numbers regarding industrial scale and efficiency, estimated GDP, governmental approval, and all other sorts of metrics that would have shocked him a few months ago had since become amazingly consistent. When harms walk the streets of Tomsk nowadays, <clears throat> it was easy to sense a more uh, jovial and upbeat aurora among the everyday people. People strolled along happily, and the cafes were full, long lines of people waited to watch the next exciting film of the cinema. Tomsk was generally a nice place to live. Even better was a pure devotion everyone seemed to have to the betterment of society. Reports often showed that the many workers were regularly offering to do overtime. Citizens went out into the community every week to collect trash and clean up, and the number of military recruits had steadily increased as more people acknowledged the need to do and Tom's newfound ability to pacify the separatists across central Siberia. Indeed, comms felt that like Tomsk was almost ready to reclaim all Central Siberian Republic's territory, and the military would be more than capable of handling a worker uprising than it was before. Everything seemed to be falling into place perfectly, and so Harms allowed himself to feel a great deal of self-satisfaction. A new Central Siberia was emerging. Well, let's go give our guys a few days to get more organization first, and then if they want to try to get their loot back, it's not time. They can try. Yeah, I don't know. This, this infantry, they, while they're not fully equipped... They're pretty good. Hey, there we go. Better industrial community. If you want to about that, please go right ahead. Excellente. 
Nice. Which means we're going to do this one next. Because now we have another focus. Oh, we can do all these. Well, that's nice. Power Reader begin to improve. The Iron Republic. Expanding the core. I don't know exactly um, which one we want to do just because we will have a overextension. So, or over... What do we call it? Over... Overextended administration. Um... We'll do the Iron Republic first, just because we can't. Even though we, I'm going to do this one. When I did this, as last time I played as Tomsk, and I think I played as a Decemberist, uh, I did one of these focuses, and then I united the area, united Central Siberia, and then we weren't able to get rid of overextended administration. So the Republic stands tall. So there's a bloody warfare, Luftwaffe bombings, and grueling industrializations led up to this moment. A Russian superpower emerging from the ashes of the Soviet Union. A nation that has experienced some of the worst atrocities and horrors the world could throw at it. And some will manage to survive, even thrive, against all odds. A battle hard in democracy, ready to assume its title on the world stage, the Siberian Republic sets out in the wider world, confident in its abilities. Pretty much. Minus one point. Minus point one. Not bad, not bad. Nice, good. Are you learning a lot here, Peter? That NBC Peter, good. Go back. And actually, we're going to have to deal with the uh, revolt, too. I forgot about the revolt. It's fine. Give us about two more weeks. We're doing the focuses anyways, that's fine. Um, prison system. You, uh oh. Well, there goes Spare. Found it from Reds Republicans. The soldiers of the PRC had expected death or exile at the end of their lost war. Many were pleasantly surprised to find forgiveness from the Republican army. The PRC's higher ups were tried in tongues. The prosecution against them was not as aggressive as it had been against defeated separatists. The men of the PRC had broken no laws of the CSR by staying true to their own allegiance, nor were they joining to go to the war of aggression to destroy the Republic. The prosecutors noted that the Red Army remnants were still illegally occupying land claimed by the CSR. This did not warn, however, treason charges as, as has been used before. The common soldiers and officers were offered to join the Republican army. This was a tempting offer to many. War was a craft, and the Republic seemed honorable men intent on helping Russia. All this found the humiliation of joining their enemies too much to bear. They <coughs> excuse me. They fought for Vasilevsky, who now risked a lengthy prison sentence. They fought for communism, not the restoration of a shaky capitalist regime. The People's Revolutionary Council came to a better sweet end, torn apart by the Republic's mercy. Old comrades said goodbye to one another as half the men gave up their swords, while the other half agreed to be deployed away from Mongolia. Many Mongolian soldiers vanished without a word into the border with Mongolia, seeking to continue their own fights. They missed the Russian brothers in arms. For many, their war was over. Beautiful. Steel and spirit paves our way. Central Siberian Republic, welcome back. Oh, I forgot about cynicism and this stuff. I don't think this matters too much. I mean, we will spend this all... Oh. Hmm. Hey, there's another research slot though. That's really good, actually. Support equipment. Um, actually, let's get some helicopters going already. I love attack helis. So we gotta give this one. I want the best research facilities ever. Uh, managing development, of course. We have this one, which we can wait until what? 67? 69. Nice. That's actually quite a while. Already looting. We close out of that one. And uh, poverty. We begin to slowly improve. Uh, there's two of them here. And still poverty relief. But begin to improve, and then this one we want slowly improve, and then higher important structures as well. I'm gonna do another one. Ooh, developmental subsidies. Ooh. That's actually really that's actually really good. You get a couple you get a synthetic refinery, thermal electric plant, infrastructure, admin office, and you get more debt, but you get uh, industrial equipment will begin to improve it slowly as well. Not bad. Worker training. That's actually really good as well. It set us up for next year because it's only a slight bonus to industry, but expertise is actually not bad at all, so we're gonna go with that one too. We need a lot more political power here. So we want no political outsiders, probably, and lots of idealism. Well, we'll see what happens. And we need more political power anyways for elections. But after the Iron Republic. So that's why I waited to do this one on poverty, just in case. Which one? Ah, see? This one reduced the admin strain on our budget, or on our state. So right now, we're at minus 35% political power, which really sucks. Uh, I want to improve poverty as fast as possible, but doing all these would be really good to do. This looks like we can just wait for all this stuff here. Defensive Doctrine... Uh, oh, we get to r rapidly improve. Nice. So any of that stuff can wait. Rising Sun, getting this one done would be good. Ah, it reduces strain there. Um, let's go with this one or this one. We could use slightly more stability. And this one, as much as I want to help out poverty, I want to get rid of... Oh, well, but the economy, though. I want more political power, though. Oh, crap. Which one do we want to do? Stamping out dangerous ideologies. Oh, but admin efficiency is extremely important as well. Ooh, universal coverage with low income protections. Look at all that political power you get. But you get no health, no, no minimum uh, wage, which I don't mind, which means you can build stuff faster, but you get worse poverty, but whatever. Expand a Trinity Association. Ooh, my, oh my gosh. Let's expand politics first. 
The Republic stands triumphantly over all of its former territories. Yet in this hour of victory, the Republic has perhaps been never been more divided politically. Emboldened by years of independence, separatists since former Slovaki, mutant years of Krasnoyarsk and anarchists of SBA are all mill around, uncertain of their future and wary of our political system. Our innovative constitution is limited in some aspects, with its strict emphasis on the four greatest salons. At the same time, Pasternak's great constitution empowers us to experiment, to try new things, to welcome new ways of doing things. If our great Republic project, or Republican project, is to endure, we must dare to dream ever bigger dreams and inspire even greater amounts of people to believe in our ideals. The Republic must endure. Our diplomatic situation, though. Still, we approach foreign nations that we may have an interest in, especially the major powers in the Pacific. Our most important concern is how some nations may be interested in us, primarily America and Japan. We have secured neutrality in the Cold War. Aligning ourselves too closely with the Nazis may endanger us in the future. This means playing nice with both the U.S. and Japan. And while it may anchor some of the salons for not growing closer to America, it's much more important that if we do not want the ire of Japan's aggression at this point, we cannot risk any sort of embargo or invasion. An embargo would absolutely destroy our economy and any chances of us overcoming our Western counterpart. And while an invasion might not be likely, we must always be prepared for unexpected outcomes. For this reason in the future, we must be friendly with both Japan and America. Perhaps keeping cordial relations uh, with Japan will even be able to reward us. Hopefully both nations will not be angered if we try to keep relations open with both of them. And the legacy of the Great Unification. The CSR was back from the brink. Every last one of the misguided separatists had been crushed and orders finally being restored across the region. The workers are returning to the factories. And the assistance of the other Central Siberian factions are not yet in open revolt, but tensions are probably high as of now. The rather overextended Republic is still functional. Gradual progress is being made with the CSC, uh, Central Siberian plan. Through all the industrialization project will of course have to be expanded to the entirety of the region. The government has at least a semblance of legitimacy and loose authority over its people, but will have to trade very carefully if he wants to earn the trust of its people. And they develop into a fully fledged nation state, not to mention reunify the entirety of Russia. In the cafes, homes, bars, and factories, the people question openly to each other whether passing next trade constitution or salons are truly as idealistic and for the people as they claim to be. There's a great risk of our citizens becoming cynics, whose apathy could single-handedly be a republic's downfall. Some may become so angry that they run for office outside of our salon system. Threatening the balance and stability of our government currently enjoys, for starters, developing the economy, maintaining political stability, and improving our army are imperative for our administration's success. Our idealism can only take us so far. This great republican experiment is, is a survivable but challenging position, and we must do what it takes to keep it alive. That being said, if we utterly sacrifice our ideals, will any of our work have been worth it? The republic carries on. Nice. The Revival of Norals. If you wonder about this one, please go ahead. Nice. Nice. And we have to work with getting a core. Oh, also. Ooh. Yeah. Local police force. No, we want local autonomy. Getting extra compliance is super helpful. Garrisons. Oh, yeah. We got to remove these guys anyways. Oh, I don't want to spend the army XP, but I'm going to do it anyways to save ourselves with some equipment. There you go. Actually, we really want to save some money. We could edit this as well. You can remove these guys. This is really stupid to do for me right now, but whatever. Um, light infantry. There we go. That's it. It costs so much army speed, but whatever. We'll be fine. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, anything here? Bribe the opposition. Becoming Storm. If you're wondering about that one, please go ahead. I don't think it's changed, so... If anything, this is all nice. I We need more authority, though, and stuff like that. The eye wall. Extra management is very nice. Good, thank you. It's almost 65, which is awesome. Raiding and looting, reunification. Oh, now you connect the roads. The area surrounding the region's mineral deposits are in tatters. A decade of neglect has left the roads in complete disrepair. And most of the facilities they used to lead are derelict and vast and utterly dilapidated and worse. Before we can bring in machinery to properly restore these, we made plans to send out a force of military engineers to restore the main road links working to uh, working conditions once more. Yes, please. It seemed like such a short, short time ago that the Anatoly Petrov had sat at this very table, announcing to his family that he was joining the Republican or Repo Republic's military, and relatively it was, but he was no longer the same boy, no longer the same man. With the regional campaigns complete and the Republic reunified, he had been given leave. He had returned home too to warm hugs from his mom and sister, and one of even greater respect from his father. Each had believed in their own way that he had fought for and shown the truth of, of their own outlook, their own salam. But he had done nothing of the sort, indeed, every one thing he had seen had proven to him the limited worldview of such a set of ideals. The Bastelars, Decembrists, Modernists, and Humanists all had at their core a set of beliefs that they could not, would not deviate from, beliefs of which their adherents, including his own family, could not see the limitations of. He could. And as a result, he no longer believed in any of them. His belief was a belief in nothing. A paradox in itself that Anatoly had naturally questioned. Could a man exist without any beliefs? And if so, what did that make him? What did that mean for how he approached life? Did it make him more able to respond to challenges, no longer shackled by one static viewpoint? Or did it make him less able without a consistent moral center? Uh, as another round of arguments erupted between his father and sister on the aspect of economic policy, one which we could once once would have gladly participated in, Anatoly remained silent. He no longer saw the purpose. What makes a man? 
good question. What makes a man? And there we go. We now see where they're going to revolt. Oh. Right there. Oh, they took Tom's. Oh, they, they took our capital, bro. Bruh. Gaffney Flow, very nice. Oh, boy. There goes those guys. Construction would be nice, but not really needed right now. Semantic research. Academic base, agricultural or industrial expertise. And research facilities. That's a two for one. That's actually really strong. You guess one too. Schools, admin offices. Import heavy machinery. It's not bad. I kind of want to do that one though. Equipment will begin to improve. Because we need to keep improving this. Because we're on rudimentary factory lines. Which we have a lot of ways to go. So we need way more factory equipment. Why not? No, oh, subversive parties. Let's go in the salons. Um, Rising Sun. Da 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 da. Ports in Germany. Well, let's go to the Bastille stands. The workers' revolt has come and gone. We've managed to put, come out on top with the revolt put down, hopefully for good. We should begin focusing on restarting the economy. The Central Siberian Revolt destroyed a lot of economic infrastructure and forced us to shift the economy into a military oriented mode of production. Our efforts should be focused on shifting military production back into civilian production. And from there, we moved to rebuild the redamaged re parts of our nation. What's important is that the Bastille stands, as long as it survives, the nation will move forward. Uh, it's not a natural spirit modified stuff. We have to be at peace. I'm going to wait to do that one just because the thing might fire, so. Let's go to the salons. The topic of how to integrate so many new systems into the salon system has sparked quite the debates in the great salons of Tomsk. Some argue that the common constitution should be amended. I also suggest political restrictions that would cast an ominous shadow over a democratic dream. It's important to calm tempers and soothe the chaos within the salons. We will need every salon to operate and speak if we're going to offer a united front to calm the political storm. By appealing to everyone's heart and minds, we'll be able to pull all the vast towns of Tomsk together to figure out the new solutions to the crisis. We need way more war support, man. Calls for uprisings? I mean, we're pretty much ready to go. The revolt of Tomsk. You're about that. Please go ahead. Well, just in case. I, I guess we could say it won't be that bad, probably, but you never know. I mean, our guys are 27 combat widths, and even though we don't know what the combat width is of the enemies, we should still be pretty good. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, they're actually not in our, their own territory. Go in immediately. Mm, you might actually want to go there first. Oh, hello. Oh, God. You're all over here. There's, like, no organization there. Norsk. Hey, everyone about better industrial XP, please go ahead. This is going to be a really sucky war for us, but whatever. Excellente. Nice. House elections. Hey, six more is good. We didn't lose anyone for the lower house, too, which is not bad either. Come on, get in there, guys. Get in there, get in there, get in there, get in there. Oh. What if you were to hold and you could take Tomsk? That's good for Army XP, too, so. Look at that Army XP. I love it. Kobe? Yeah, the logistic companies are going to be so important in the, from here on out in TNO. And just mods in general. Uh, just go this way, guys. Just go in. Take Tomsk. Oh, they threw another division. That sucks. It looks like elites, too. They do be looking a little elite right there. They're not suffering from any supply loss, which I do not really understand that. How you doing? How you faring? Winter expert might not be bad. You know what? I actually do that last time. Requisition at winter gear. What is that one? Uh, it's January. You know what? Do it. Because you can. Hey, we got Tom's back. Yay. So, what, what's the capital now? Kol Pashevo? This, this war sucks. But they're close to losing. So, this go in the salons. That's nice. Subversive parties. Already new citizens of the new republic are assembling to form new political parties. Some are fairly mundane liberal or conservatives. Others are more extremists, such as the radical Algerian anarchist party or mere front for... Or are mere fronts for dangerous groups of former military separatists or shadowy businessmen. Their progress are limited in some ways by Tom's constitution. All candidates will have to be absorbed or endorsed on the electoral list of one of the four great salons. We can further monitor the situation of putting dangerous parties and associations under police surveillance. Let's look at go against our idealist principles, but being a valuable source of information. Once a list of modern extremist factions is drawn up, we can encourage moderates to, to join the salon system and try to eliminate extremist influence. Which would be a good thing to do. <gasps> George Wallace! <gasps> oh, yes! Well, with uh, Central Siberia once again under control, many problems are starting to appear, mostly in our administration. 
Well, we're overextended. The main issue is that with the salons. Any form of cohesion we once had been shattered, and unity within the government is at an all-time loan, as each sal salon <clears throat> has its own idea on how to make govern the new territory. Bickering and arguments fill the doom on the coffee shops as those loyal to the salon disagree with whatever any other salon has to say. If we do not wish our former democracy to collapse, we must attempt to keep the salons in support of the government and end their endless quarrel. In the future, some of our actions may create cynicism, which could end the system of salons if it reaches too high. We want to reduce the cynicism as much as possible. We do not want the salons to collapse. However, that means we cannot get to helping to work on our own projects, so we should balance cynicism with our own ideas. Successful ma successfully maintaining the cohesion within the salons will keep our democracy alive, and our future actions will be very well determined the fate or the strength of, of the Republic. The balance must be kept, of course. Yeah, trying to do this across the entire area is kind of bad. How are you not suffering from supply loss, man? I get a supply point, but still. Still. The only reason why we're not doing well here is because of the supply system. But we won! Yay! Good job, guys! Good job! Um, I guess we really just do that, I guess, suppose. At this point, how much debt do we incur every month? We have a little bit of debt. We get a surplus, which is not bad, not much, but it's very nice. Um, what does it do? We lose stability, get more debt, reach facilities goes up. I'm, I'm always going to end up doing that one, so. Actually, where are we at for this one as well? Basic army? Ooh, that sucks. No wonder we weren't doing so well there. The legacy of the Severe Uprising. Okay, so this one actually did it. Well, that's good. So we'll do this one, and then we'll also do what? Ooh, growth 2% growth. Oh my goodness, yeah. The legacy of the four-year plan. Interesting, some of our friends in the private uh, sector have originally expressed interest in following up on the four-year plans we implemented previously, though with an interesting slant. Instead of having the government build new factories and set higher quotas for state-owned enterprises, our friends ins instead suggest that we instead invest those resources we put aside for that into the free market. The funds will be used to prop up new businesses in our nation and give it a boost after the destruction of recent wars and revolts. Subversive parties, several commoners begin to show signs of radical thought of all things belonging to undesired ideologies. Political groups centered around radicalism are popping up within our borders and we don't fix this issue soon, it will brutally tear our democracy apart. We must find the individuals who snuck into our lands and contaminated our flowing well of intellectual thought with the poison of tyranny. We'll be keeping a watchful eye on the commoners and even the political elites for any important developments. In the meantime, our agents will try to find and crack down on any radical political party that may have corrupted our peasants' minds. What well, nip this problem in the bud? So we're going to read this again, like I said, read basically before we faded in and faded out. Please go right ahead. Of course, we're finishing off the Bastille stand. We've got two weeks left for that. But I'm trying to improve poverty as much as humanly possible just because you know, poverty is good to get rid of. And I'm trying to get more idealism. We definitely need more idealism as much as I want to focus on society. There's just never enough political power here, man. Also, I did convert these divisions to garrison, so it's a little cheaper for us. Um, stuff like that. Rise Electoral Progressive Movement. Rory News has been reported recently about our democracy, calling themselves the Electoral Progressive Movement. People from the liberated territories of Central Siberia are now calling for the abolition of the special voting system, the requirements for being backed by the salons. Well, this may sound good on paper to them, for Tomsk's unique democracy means the end of the past and ideal design. Technically, anyone is able to run for office, but the salon system constrains the type of ideologies candidates can run on. Some may say this is by design, but... It has been more beneficial than anything. The salon's electoral system has kept the salon's democracy, or Thompson's democracy, stable. It's something rare for Russia. If not, who knows of the dangerous ideologies that can sneak into our democracy, tearing it apart from the inside. Already, there's been many responses from major uh, political individuals, but it does not seem like this electoral progressive movement it does not seem like the electoral progressive movement will be going any way time soon. We may have to prepare for the confrontation that has sad the fate of our democracy. Hopefully, it'll be peaceful for stability's sake. Uh, if you remember this one, please go right ahead. Mm, I love Bellini. Cool. Oh, what happened there? We got rid of one of these things. 27%. Like I see the Great Worker Uprising. Everywhere one looked in the salons was a heated and passionate discussion between the colleagues and intellectuals. And the same dilemma hung over every person's head. How to treat the workers of Central Siberia in the wake of the crushed uprising? Both sides. Uh, the debate could be heard if one listened closely enough to any one of the many conversations that slogged late into the night, and each had a legitimate and well-intentioned point. In fact, this crucial debate had even created something of a schism among the bastards. The first note of things. Granting the workers more rights and improved working conditions is not only the right thing to do. It's necessary if we want to restore their loyalty and keep the Republic stable and peaceful. The second side. Making these concessions to the workers is ideal, but impractical. Central Siberia needs to industrialize rapidly, and besides, the uprising was inevitable regardless of any concessions made. While lively and intellectually philosophically stimulating, this debate between the two bastard factions is already settled. Karmans has always decided that the industrialization had to take precedence over everything else to prevent the Republic from losing everything, and so the workers should simply have to wait. 
This was a fun discussion. More worrying news from the electoral progressive movement. Multiple marches in the streets of Tomsk have started to pop up, mostly made up of people asking to expand democracy. There's no doubt that this is connected to the movement. More worrying is that there are reports of unsavory elements, former separatists, anarchists, and communists, however. There are also a lot of genuine Democrats in the crowd as well, showing up the movement is not just a separatist plot. People in Tomsk are splitting or split as to whether the system of salons should be reformed or kept similar. While reforming may allow these unsavory elements into the government, there's a reason why things should not be kept away. They are. The salon system is constraining after all, but what... But would reform betray a past and ideal? We must maintain our current path. Work them into the system. Bassard's plea for action. The Bassard Salon has been at the forefront of the Salon conferences and demanding action, led by Carms. The members of the Trinity Society have thundered publicly now that that is not the time for indecision. The public fought hard to gain its former, former provinces. Now must fight to integrate them and reduce its opposition to irrelevance. The Salon system Tom's rotating constitution or shields against extremism, granting the political caste supreme powers over proposing new laws to keep the Republic alive and strong. Now is the time to use these powers to build a veritable rampart between the state and its enemies. Full on measures. Carms adjusted his clothing as he stood in front of the cabinet, all of them looking uncomfortable as he waited for the president to begin his impromptu meeting. You must understand why I brought you here today, he said, stopping to look at the faces of his compatriots and so the issues relating to internal security. It is being dealt with, sir, said Shlapshnikov's confidence in his vo voice. That is good, but I'm not just taking the talking of the worker rebellion. Are you discussing the separatist agitation? interjected Vosnesinsky, looking at Shlapshnikov and then to the, then to the president. That is precisely the issue. The separatists are a minority, yes, but this does not make them any less of a threat. The recent protests, for instance, could spread their message. They demand an end to the salon system, a system that has kept the Republic safe for years now. Karm stopped looking at this cabinet for approval. They nodded, and he continued. That is why they must be dealt with soon. President Karms, who we deal with them like we've dealt with the workers? No, that's not necessary. Shapshnikov, they are dangerous, but not that dangerous. Their protests will not be conducted to, st to stability, said Olenikov. Already, the humanists are giving their sympathies to the, in the Duma, not even to mention its effects on faith and our institutions. That's why we must keep an eye on them and prepare full measures if they get violent. Ideally, they must be brought into the Republic structure, economically and socially, and in any case they get too big for our liking, to deal with them through proper and legal means. All in agreement? Aye. Okay, we do want more idealism. We re really want more idealism, not uh, cynicism, so. And I don't want to increase our popularity. Hmm. You know what? We'll sacrifice our authority for a little bit. So we're going to move to get hopefully more than 49%. We lose stability, which does suck, but whatever. It is what it is. Hey, minus 0.24 is pretty good, though. Counter protest in the capital. The mayor of Tom sat at his desk, his hand shaking violently as he listened to his chief of the police describing the situation outside. The mayor, a chubby small man, had only been elected a year before and was already protesting and returning a part of the city, maybe even the whole country. What a great way to start my administration, he thought with some bitterness. The circumstances are dire, sir, began the chief. It appears the former separatists have traveled from all over our territory to protest the government. The mayor nodded, desperately wishing to be a cup of vodka to calm his nerves. No major fights have been broken out, and the counter-protesters? Just as angry, but no major fights on their end either. It seems that they're waiting for the other to make a move. His chief nodded, we have enough units to defend the Republicans against the Separatists. We could also leave them to their own devices. His chief raised an eyebrow, but said nothing. I'm waiting for a word from the government, as this is a national issue as well as a local one. As the mayor said this, the door slammed open, and in came a young man, barely out of school, running to the mayor's desk. Telegram from the security minister, sir. The mayor grabbed the paper in order to send to the cops, let the protesters fight it out. I forget, I did this one one way. I forget exactly which way we can do it. Also, we're on, uh, I guess, fair rating, so. Send to the cops. I think I did this one originally, but if we, which did go very well, but. Send to the cops. We'll see what happens. If it's not that bad, then we'll keep it, but we'll see. Keep working on the economy. Happy 65, everybody. Let's grab this one, too. Ooh, max buildings in the state. It's not bad. Ooh, more up though. Get, get that one first. That'd be good. Still not looking too bad there. Keep improving poverty, please. Please crowd the streets. With the violence threatening to tear apart capital apart. Oh, crap. Our only option was to send the police to help to calm the situation down. With the police backing the pro-republic side of the protest, we'd hope the protesters would lose hope in continuing, unfortunately. However, some protesters did not see the desired effect. Sort of anti-republicans fought with the police and counter-protesters, leading to many being wounded during the fighting. However, after the fighting, many of the protesters have now been pacified as more police presence is being seen in the city. It seems their decision to bring the police in was a good one, as the protesters began to head home. However, many in the government are criticizing their actions. We may have decreased the power of our independence, but in the process we went against the, against the very ideas of the Republic. I'm sure we made the right choice. Where are we at now? Holy crap. Was that 41? Oh my goodness. Big darn hero. Nikolai Masilov hit the dirt as he had another bullet ripped the air next to his head. He set up as the sound of combat rage around him, his, best, his back pressed against the south wall of a brick house, attempted to regain his composure. He rose to his feet and repeated his instructions to himself through the labored breaths. Lead the local militia in his defense of the village. Easy. He had just not expected to be here with so many darn bandits, as the robber of the bandit plague village was almost in sync with their ambush. Now the disorganized defenders of the village were spread out and vulnerable. Nikolai peered across the street where two of those local men, armed with hunting rifles, stared down a rusty truck with a salvaged machine gun from behind a hastily assorted uh, meant assortment of sandbags. 
The aging soldier suddenly pulled back beyond the walls and another hail of lead tore through the thin air behind his cover, or beside his cover. He gripped his service revolver until his knuckles were white, drawing a deep, sharp breath before leaning out of safety to find a child, no older than four, and clad in crimson stained dress, was stalling into the dusty road where the skirmish was going on in a mere thirty feet in front of Nikolai. Misty-eyed and scared, the small girl cried out for her family as she staggered aimlessly in search of them, nearby in the, nearly in the bandits' line of fire. Nikolai panicked thoughts wandered to his daughter at home before he found himself bolting out of, out of the safety of cover. Bolts bent into the wall behind Masilov ferociously, barely audible over the deafening drumbeat of his heart. The girl was now almost in the street, a bare foot passing the brick wall that had been shooting her from the bloodthirsty gunners. Barely a religious man, a curse laid in prayer, still escaped Nikolai's lips. As he dove forward, his left ear now ringing from a barely missed shot. Scooping the girl up, the man rolled back into covers. A spray of gunfire dug into the soil where the toddler had been stationed moments before. Ain't he right? Cool. Oh, that's good to do as well. We're going to kill our stability. Reconciliation, Tomsk. The CSR's leadership has publicly announced that a legal entity for the purpose of understanding what happened during the most recent protests in the capital. A legal entity, officially titled the Official Commission on the Truth and Reconciliation of Activities Relating to Protests, is to be made up of apolitical judges, officers, and investigators, with intention to determine the level of violence and who and who is not responsible for violence, in addition to the recommendations on how to avoid this in the future. The Commission is the first of its kind in the history of the Republic, and its scope is the first of its kind. I Meaning the government have stated that while this the crisis in democratic faith has been worrying it could be significantly worse. Violence could have resulted in a rioting, one source stated. Many political commentators are worried about the results of such cynicism in the population, especially coming from citizens of former separatist movements and territories, and are calling on the government to restore democratic faith in the people and to ensure stability once more. Communities always solve our problems, right? So we've got to wait to get some of these done so we can do them again. We're going to increase idealism as much as possible, so. Work them into the... Hmm. We, have, we need more cynicism. We need less cynicism first, so. Anything here. Uh, we need a lower house majority as well. Gosh dang it. Well, let's, let's get that one first. Like I see the three-year plan. Uh, let's just explore the, exploring synthetic culture. What's to stop us from synthesizing a culture all of our own? We control the state, and with that power, we also gain the ability to influence a nation's culture, more specifically the workers' culture. Surely it wouldn't be too difficult to begin promoting Protestant-style work ethic with Confucian obedience and Soviet worship of industry, indeed. We, could, we should hope that such encouragement of the synthetic culture will bring about more productivity amongst our citizens and work to further increase the efficiency of the state. Decrease political outsiders? I mean, it's not bad, but still. I don't mind slightly more political outsiders if this gets us 52%. And we lost 20 political power too. God dang it. With the first leg of our expedition into Rolls complete, we can now haul in heavy construction equipment to restore the old Soviet excavation infrastructure back to working condition. It takes 50 command power. Holy crap. But it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. We got that one, which is great. Light aircraft. Uh, we'll be working on that as well. 8 to 65. I really want to hit industry harder if possible. Right now, since we're not really at war, so that'd be good. And like I see the three year plan. The bureaucrats and the government are working diligently to design our next three year plan to further develop the economy. While convincing arguments have been made in favor of investing government resources into furthering the free market as opposed to the centralized economic apparatus we currently maintain, we are of the position that until Russia is unified under one government, state control of vital industries like the military industrial complex is necessary. When our nation is safe from the constant threat of invasion it's currently, currently linkages is under, we might consider privatizing some industry and opening up the markets, but until then, the centrally planned economy will remain. More railways? Very nice. God, I want to do this so badly, but we don't have enough political power. We're going to get what? Well, barely one. A little over one. Not bad. Not bad. Agriculture is looking pretty good, too. Admin efficiency is slowly getting better as well. We have almost a billion in debt, but 11 billion in GDP, so I'm not too worried about that either. Especially if we get surpluses every month. Um, That's getting better, slightly better. We actually They're actually experienced already, which is actually really strong already. So getting innovative would be extremely good. And equipment, of course, that's getting better. And nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just wait to get more idealism first. Food, rising cynicism or and the rise of independent politicians. Both issues could cause a failure of a revolutionary diplomatic experiment, which would suck for us. But making use of de, de gisme, which is a French word to which I know I'm mispronouncing. The new lands and territories we've acquired in recent years are vast and brimming with people. Organizing and ruling over these lands with our current administration is proving greatly problematic. Not only is our staff too limited to handle the paperwork and bureaucratic load these lands have put on, their sh on our shoulders, but we're also finding that the new bureaucrats we've managed to bring on board to manage these lands have been entirely incompetent. There are many former leaders and bureaucrats from the warlord governments we previously conquered with experience and intelligence needed to effectively administer new territories. We should seek them out and bring them on board, if nothing else. Uh, it should help us better integrate these new territories by offering them leaders of their own people. 
That growth, 0.5% is not bad. Rapidly improve industrial expertise and begin to improve admin efficiency. It's very good, too. Uh, we need that one. And since we're here anyways, um, we are not looking good. We, upper house is fine. Lower house is okay as well. Um, we need more authority and popularity. Yeah, let's get some popularity first, just because... Uh, wow, that did nothing. Okay, it might be better just to lower their popularity, but that's really bad for us. I hope we can win the next election. Oh, good God. We don't have enough political power, man. I mean, it's only 65. We have until 69 to go to war, but we have, like, I think an election is 67, so something we've got to keep an eye on as well. So that increases popularity in one random district. We lose even more political power. Holy crap. We need a lower house majority. Getting this one done will give us more stability, which is very good, but increases everything. Increases the city system. Why? Business taxes will increase by 5%. Interest rates will increase by 0.55. Mm, probably gets slightly worse. But you get quite a bit more political power. I think that's that's worth it. So, Expanding our bureaucracy. That could be pretty good. Our republic is growing and changing at a rapid rate. And our bureaucracy needs to get bigger if we are to handle it. We recently quadrupled our population during the reunification of Central Siberia. Increasing the need for bureaucrats to manage these new peoples. We've also been implementing more encompassing welfare and labor policies. Which will require a larger bureaucracy to run and operate. As the republic grows, we, so too must we if we are to state this... Uh, administrative and logistical needs of the nation. Nice. Cool. Honestly, don't even make these. Just make these guys. It's fine. How much... How far are we on research? I mean, it's not a whole bunch we're doing here, but this, this also does help decrease political outside as well. So that's not too bad. Why did this go down again? 48%. God dang it. Deregisma. Yeah, I'll expand the bureaucracy next. It's fine. Formation of West African Alliance. Africa's going to kill itself, but what else is new? Here, train, anyways. Honestly, how many guns do we have? We need more fighters. Uh, we have 33,000. You know, I want to just train. Let's let uh, everyone train. It's not much, but. And it won't cost us that many guns either. So. Try to get just more army XP in general is going to be super, super needed. Get almost 10 a day. Roughly 10. That's not bad. 9.3. and eh, roughly 10 still. Economy looking not bad. It's slowly getting cut down, which is not bad. Growth, we're not having that much growth either, but that's okay. Sabbing up dangerous ideologies. Uh, I don't want to do that yet, because we do... Oh, but admin efficiency goes up. Well, we lose poverty, we lose political power, industrial expertise change. Ah, I'll do it anyways. I want that admin efficiency. That's super important. While well, an educated, conscious, and politically free citizenry is important to any good democracy, there must be limits as the ideologies we allow to operate within the country. Dangerous ideologies, such as Marxism and fascism, uh, led to the oppression and murders of millions. These ideologies have served as a ne negative for the society and have actively worked to bring humanity backwards. It will be both irresponsible and careless to allow such ideologies to manifest themselves within our populace, and steps should be taken to ensure such a niche situation never occurs. There you go. 50, 50, or you give me 59%, bro. I'm do that one too. Not bad. Still, still not bad. I mean, we need to keep producing a lot. Eh, that's going to get slightly worse soon, but whatever. Expertise. 5.75, 5.5, that's not a huge difference at all. Well, at least for us, wow. Komi is still alive. Samara's still alive. Vyaka's still alive, too. Not that good. Oh, oh! The West Russian Revolutionary Front? Oh my gosh. That is terrible for them. Yay! Make it worse for them over there. Make it terrible, god awful for them. Very good. Indonesia War. Glad we're not getting involved with that. Oh, and there go the Armenians. Will the Armenians be able to survive, or will they get genocided again? Why not both? Genocided and survive. Well, I guess that's kind of contradictory, but whatever. Probably the opposition recruits the best outsiders, yeah. Now we're good. Wait, what? Really? Oh, what did I change? Did I change anything here? Uh, basic motorized. Am I missing something here? Did I change something by accident? 
APCs would be nice, but we don't really need them too much. And so if that's a case, we need more of the lower house, so... Yeah, turn out... Uh, not looking really great for us. Decreases our authority. Wow! That butchered our authority. Holy crap. Holy crap. Convert from the unions, because we got to get that stability and political power. We have to. There's a variety of in independent unions operating in several sectors of the economy in our country. From steelworking to transportation to agriculture, there's a union for it. These unions are desperate and limited in their bargaining power as part of our domestic policy. We began pushing for larger state-run unions to organize and control the various local unions being run across the country, which would help to strengthen the workers' cause overall. Though there are many unions that reject the idea wholeheartedly, there are others that have been swayed by the arguments of a nation, national union backed by the government and supported by government funds. We should endear ourselves to these unions and encourage them to join. Nice. Very nice. Hey, 7.3%. At least the economy's looking better. Use plus, not bad. 55% is not much at all. But it's something. Also, I do want to spend political power to get more consumer goods for more growth. But they're just PP is just so tight right now. We have a tight PP. That's something I don't think I'd ever ask anybody, probably. Huh. Cool. Lots of roads. And more prisons. Um, let's go to Sosbiersk. Build a prison there, that'd be good. I don't even want to be bothered with this stuff for now. It's fine. Oh, the Outsiders Act. Ooh! That's not bad. More research speed increases idealism and decreases political outsiders. That's actually really good. Yeah. And now we have no political power. Holy crap. But where are we at for this? How much? Oh, 57% are you kidding me? Come on, bro. Learning from foreign comp corporations. The unification of a region of Russia has brought about an economic boom. The peace and stability we brought to our own homelands has been improved. Investors' faith in the economy is encouraged. Young entrepreneurs begin building their own companies. These new companies are going to be competing with foreign corporations with stronger logistics, better management, and lower productive costs or production costs. If our domestic companies are to survive, they will need to emulate these foreign corporations and everything we've mentioned before. We will not become another market to exploit. We will not. Well, it's not looking good as it was before, but that's going to be looking good. Deficient administration sucks. It could be worse, but if you go up here, you get 10% more, 15% more daily political power gain, better recruitment population factor, 15% more stability, 10% more base taxable population, better drift defense, uh, social spending goes down, and needed consumer, goods, needed consumer goods goes down as well, which is very nice. And even though we still have a basic military, but we're not concerned about the military too much right now. We'll be alright for now. Democratic process. Abram entered the warm building, glad to be out of the freezing streets of Tomsk. Rubbing his hands together, he stepped forward towards the desk, a short woman with glasses sitting behind it. Good morning, ma'am. My name is Abram Dmitriev, and I used to be a politician in Novosibirsk. How would I run for office in Tomsk? The woman looked up and smiled. Oh, it's very easy. Just sign all these forms. Fill the location you wish to run and include the salon you've been back by. Wait, so I'd be back by salon? Why can't I run as an independent? The woman's face smiled, or smile faded. That's not how fast enough to design our unique democracy, dear. You must be back by salon or else you will not appear on the ballot. Clear and simple. That doesn't seem very democratic, as you have to follow the ideology of the salons, but if I guess I had to pick the modernist ones, that'd probably be the best. The one leaned back in her chair, well then, make sure you get this signed by a modernist leader and bring it back to me. They're having a meeting in the conversation all next week, and dear, don't complain about how this is undemocratic. You lived in a philosophy, for Christ's sake. You'll get used to it. God dang, it keeps going down 49%, my goodness. Taylor Welfare Net. The government only has so many resources, and although we'd love to be able to support everybody, choices must be made uh, concerning who gets what and how much they get. A new administration or administrative body, welfare body, has been assembled to assist in that regard. It will aid us in determining what populations have the greatest need for aid and what form that aid will take. In some cases, a financial stimulus is needed to lift the region out of poverty, and in others it might be the construction of new soup kitchens and homeless shelters. By targeting exactly what is needed in a varied population, will maximize efficiency and quality of life. Cost goes up, that's fine. We lose a little bit of stability. Poverty gets slightly worse. We need it gets, it gets worse. Whatever. We need this. As much as I want to do that one too. <sighs> Greatly increases idealism. I mean, we kind of have to do it. I mean, we need more idealism. We need it so, we, so our country does okay, but still. <sighs> it's not good. And of course we need more prisons, but what else is new? Kind of looking okay though. Tax alienation once. 
Erkem and Pelican could be have been a high level official in the government of Orosia, doing what he could to serve the pe people, the Altai as well as the newly arrived old believers. Those days might be passed by those no less committed to serving his people's interests, with a restriction of political involvement to the salons and their members, however. He had joined one to do so. As such, he began attending the meetings of the humanist salon, seeming as the most closely aligned with his ideals. However, it didn't, hadn't exactly gotten his plan. What do you mean, or must say, when we must focus on improving the cities first? Erkeman found himself asking this as a response to a fellow humanist. They are both at the latest meeting, full of leaders and inspiring leaders alike. What about the people of rural areas? Some cannot afford to wait, some might die, they must. Protecting the wealth for the common man must include all of them. And it will, I assure you, the other man replied, with a patronizing smile that Erkeman immediately hated. The cities must be our priority for improvement, because as the lives of the people in them are bettered, so too will the lives of rural people be... I, I understand your concerns, but for the sake of the villages, the cities must come first now, you'll excuse me. The other man walked past him, as though he was of no importance. Well, that was his other problem with the humanists. Erkerman thought, while their focus on welfare of the common man was well and good, they put too much emphasis on the ideals of leadership at the same time, and too little on the thoughts of people. As he came to this conclusion, he began to wonder if all of the salons had the same nature. Even the selfless lose faith at times. Connect Norals to Yenesi. Transporting material from the Norals to our industrial and commercial centers in the south has been a difficult endeavor. The permafrost has made the establishment of roads and railways difficult, to say the least, but there is another venue. But having our men reclaim Dudinka and reconnect it with the old Soviet railway part is built as part of the Siberian plan in the 30s, we can use the Yenesi River to once again ferry products to more hospitable destinations downstream. Yay! This better give us up to 60%. I mean, come on, man. This is dumb. And the expanded Trinity Association. The best lords are and always have been a hobble thinkers and industrial planners. As a sense for a practical pair with a little idealism can go a long way towards making what might seem like a dreams into reality. And what dreams we've had. We brought our republic from a weak warlord state from the fringes of Siberia into one of the most formidable contenders for Russian dominance. And people have taken note. All manners of thinkers and highly skilled professionals have flocked to the city or to the party of rationality and intellectualism. The best lords have become the golden standard for how Russian or government should be run in Russia. Endearment. Staring into his dream forlornly, Erkema and Pelican hardly noticed when a man walked into the bar and all heads turned towards him. They hardly cared either. The usual pleas, the man said as he sat down next to Erkema. As the bartender went to get the liquor from the top shelf, Erkema noticed the man sitting beside him turned to look at him with a frown. Are you all right? he asked. Erkema let out a sigh and gave a thin and sincere smile. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. What's your name, by the way? I'm surprised you don't recognize me. I'm Dmitri Lekakutyov. And you? That certainly caught Ekerman's attention. What a cosmic coincidence that he should meet somebody that important here. Glancing to the door, he saw a couple of bodyguards paying close attention. My name's Ekerman Pelkin. Currently I'm with the humanist, but I, it hasn't been working out. Lekachikov's, Lekachikov's surprise on hearing that seemed genuine, and he seemed to want him to continue. Though he hesitated at a moment, Ekerman only gave him. A bunch of darn elitists who think the people, city people are so much more important than everyone else. I agree with them on their goal, but their approach is insufferable. That made Lakachov smile. It was the most sincere one Erkman had seen in weeks. His drinks are on me, he told the bartender. He needs them. Then Lakachov turned again, again to Erkman, seeming to study him for a moment. I can't say we'll be agreeing on everything, but among the Decembrists, it's always the people, city or rural, Russian or not, who come first. So if that's the sort of attitude you're looking for, then you can or you're always welcome to attend our meetings. So that's so, Erkman replied, feeling a strange sort of relief and acceptance. You know what? I think I will. Thank you, Dimitri. Hope once lost is restored to the heart. Now, I don't want to create cynicism as much as possible, so... Education Bureau. Oh my goodness. You get way more political power if you go this way. Ah, oh, screw it. We're going to go this way. We're next. Screw, screw the cynicism. The best lords of modern, strange bedfellows as they may be, have countered the humanist and December's proposal with a policy program of their own. Their joint program can see vast infrastructure investment in the new territories, allowing new citizens to get involved within the Republic society. Over time, their attachment to old ideals and political fractions would weaken, aided by the work of our intelligence agency in dissolving radical organizations. The slow way would, in time, reduce greatly reduced independent pressure on the Republic systems. This method countered the Decembers and humanists, as little more than a mass deployment of bribes and pork barrel spending to buy peace from the new citizens. I mean, nevertheless, the modernist ambassadors are forging ahead with their own campaign to see this new legislation passed. Oh, crap. And the South African War is nice and all, but... We lost five. Oh my gosh. We're getting butchered. This is stupid. I don't like this at all. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, we're spending all this political power to keep us ourselves afloat, and we can't do it. What is wrong with this? Are, are, is our faction really this bad? Because we got to have at least 60%, you know, idealism. Greater than 60%. But we can't get any popularity because we can't do anything here. Like, we are sucking hard. I hope we can do okay here, man. If not, I'm going to use comms commands because I don't like this. I don't like this at all. 
You spent a lot on civilian stuff. Holy crap. Advisory referendum. Yeah, I didn't realize that we, lose, we lost so much political power. Uh, I have an efficiency begins to approve. That's not bad. Yeah. Uh, I prefer the Novus Abyss conference because you get way more political power, but still. A symphony of steel movement. Everything is finally well tuned and balanced in central Siberia. We have a mixture of state enterprises and private businesses generating high profits and plenty of new jobs. The region is finally becoming industrialized as our economy, resource, output, and military production all grow day by day. Or just enough to get by social safety net as we placated the workers enough that they're content while we had not to sacrifice too much from the government or industry coffers to earn this stability. And finally, a new culture of hard work and strong discipline is spread everywhere. The economy, the workers, and business businessmen are in it are all running smoothly and efficiently, and this accomplishment alone is enough to confirm that we've achieved economic success. I suppose we can pat ourselves on the back, but mm, we'll see. We'll see. Advisory referendum. The common constitution allows for advisory referendums on thorny societal debates. A supermajority of the deputies are the force of laws now requesting an advisory referendum on the political issue. The referendum is asked citizens whether the modernist bastard program of long-term integration or the December's humanist plan of independent political right is to be made the law of the land. The campaign is spread throughout old and new territories as mandated by the common constitution. The sitting president is in no way forced to follow the referendum's results. Rejecting the popular will, however, is likely to have grave consequences on our legitimacy. We'll see what happens. I think the last time I did this, I actually used Consequence 2 for this too, so. Yay! At least that was good. At least that's gone. We got rid of the uh, debuffs there for that old one. We can't even focus on anything else. Like, industrially, we're really good, but we can't focus on anything else, which is kind of questionable, to say the least. Wait, did we get anything else here? No? Okay. 4% growth is not bad, though. Not bad. 22 divisions? Not bad. Come on, give me something else here. Give me something else. Increase the senses of my god. Mm -mm. Can't afford that. Well, it's only down by 5%, so it could be much worse. Um, honestly, I don't want this one, so if you want to read this one, please go ahead, because we definitely want Integration Bureau. And we're going to make it go anyways. The government is to go ahead with the modernist bastard plan to help along with this. A new set of integration bureau will be deployed in all new territories. These bureaus will be staffed by neutrally appointed bureaucrats and will be tasked with aiding the integration of the new territory into the republic's economy. Poverty, joblessness, and political radicalism are to be fought hard against. The republic must do right by its new children. All shall be nourished, all shall be taught, and all shall be made proud to live in the great nation. Let cynics say what they may, none shall be left behind. Until we leave them behind. You know what? We need the idealism. Our popularity is not terrible, though. We have no uh, house upper seats. And there, too, so. If you want to buy this one, too, please go ahead. So, we need more popularity. 22%. Uh, actually, who are we with? It was what? Come on, close it out. The modernists. As long as the modernists are still okay for now, we're somewhat okay ish. So, we really decrease December's popularity. But point three. Why is it so little? Is it because we have no authority? What does authority do? Yeah, I don't know. I don't like the system here. More factory output. That's good. That's good to get at least. I want to do that one, but. Uh, do it anyways, because we, we need more research anyways. That's fine. That's not bad. That's pretty good already. That's probably the last one we're going to do it for now. 50-50% chance. Cool. And just in case, let's save anyways. 366. Oh, I mean, we're on a projected path to do better and better and better, but still. Humanist December's victory. Ah, uh, well, that sucks. So, which means... This one won. Submission has been approved. If you wonder about this, please go right ahead. And uh, we'll see what happens in just a little bit. Well, would you look at that? The advisory referendum had the modernist Bastlord victory anyways. Well, one of the shiny, brag-worthy features of democracy is its ability to make decisions based directly on the will of the people. And today we just did that. 
Sort of. Not using Kant's commands. A sort of a non-binding referendum on the political status of independence are in the modernist bachelor plan denying independent politicians easy ballot and government and access in favor of more gradual political integration is one. The people of Tom seem to largely accept and appreciate our unique salon system the way it is and agree with the modernists and bachelors that allow working independence to operate freely within the system with destabilize and slower governance. While there are many people who support independence working outside of the current system, these people are not as numerous as some may have anticipated. Of course, the referendum is non-binding. The president is not legally obligated to act upon its results in the field that making life easier for independence is a moral, practical thing to do. There's nothing stopping them from except, except the knowledge that doing so would create a lot of cynics. Of course, the people have spoken. And of course, we don't have both of these open. Of course not. Why would we? Wow, you get a lot more political power here. But, integrate the, the bureaus. If you want to read this again, please go right ahead. Thank you. Totally didn't do anything bad there. Totally did not. Why is it so quiet, too? Dealing with extremists. <clears throat> the government has now gone ahead with the program to tackle the political crisis. The wind has been taken out of much of our opposition. However, some determined critics of the Republic remain. Hardliner militaries and Novos Lubiers can cross Noyarsk. Intractable critics of the late CSR and the remnants in the Far East all united in a hatred of our government. Discord has once again broken out in the four major salons over the topic of censure. Many agree that the Republic is no place for extremism and that the voices of these enemies of the state should be silenced. Others point that out uh, with their new approach to the political crisis. The opposition's power base dwindles by the day. Better to let the radicals rage to an ever shrinking crowd. The president is likely to be asked to make a final decision. This is administration on, on our state. Increase the modernist popularity in a random district, as well as bachelor popularity. And you get plus 0.65 more political power and stability. Nice. Not bad. Could be better, but not bad. Political situation. A hey, hey, 63% is pretty nice. Probably at least one more. And we need way, 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 way more authority here. But we can't do anything like that yet. God dang it. And we need more lower house support as well, too, which is gonna kinda suck, but whatever. Can use Bastolat up lined. We are under a political crisis. Not good. A new friends in the salon. I love the salon. The four great salons have opened new branches all across the nation. Scores of the curious citizens have begun attending them. Not all of our new residents find the salon system pertinent, but enough that do do that the four great societies have been seeing their membership swell. Dozens of new thoughts, artistic techniques, and political programs have begun swirling around each salon. Despite the grumblings of the old guard, the growth of the salon system is in the long run the likeliest candidate to fully resolve the political crisis, and for that reason it could be a good idea for the central government to aid its spread throughout the nation. Art, science, and politics shall be democratized, a new set of citizens, assemblies are given birth throughout central Siberia. Nice. What do we have for this one, just in case? 63%, we gotta do it again. For the Bureau of Integration. Nice. Close out of that one. Improve academic base. If you'd like to read about that one, please go right in. Happy 1966, April 1st. Something to be celebrated, my friends. Nice. More output. Better poverty. Expanding mining operations. We'll invest in expanding the mines, improving the, working, improving the equipment used by our workers. Petroleum uh, excavation. Yes, please. And modernized freight train network. We're currently primarily relying on old Soviet railways and gauges for the early 20th century, but modernizing the links from north to Dudinka and those of Soviets to the south, we can greatly improve our situation. Yes, please. Oh, I want to do this. I really want to do this. But well, we might have to keep the political power up here, too. Dealing with them extremists. Yeah. We're we'll going to do that one first. Still got 25 political power too, so that's good. Resolving the political crisis. Through cooperation disputes, the four great salons have managed to weather the first political challenge to pass next new regime. The issues of independence, politicians, and of cynicism in our nation fair are far from resolved. Left to the fest, these twin threats could end up fatally undermining our idealistic republic. There's no reason to despair for a great democratic experiment who also gives us the tools needed to weather the storm. We must stand vigilant, remain true to ourselves, and open to compromise. Pasternak's legacy must endure as its guardians. The four great salons must constantly strive to rise above the petty politics to ensure that the flame of idealism burns in central Siberia. Dealing with extremists. With a gauntlet of extremism gripping tightly our nation, we must decide how it should be handled. The ideologies of fascism, communism, and their all their cousins threaten to strike at the heart of our very democracy and eliminate the experiment we started. Nevertheless, our mission is to allow people from all backgrounds to have a say in our government. 
While we decided to ban the radical political elements or parties to ensure our democratic system, the idea of placing asterisks around freedom of speech contradicts the original message, but it will protect our government from falling under the oppressive boot. Alternatively, we can continue permitting the radical rhetoric at the cost of the possibility that one independent party may gain too much support in the end, however, would maintain our belief that everyone in the country should have a say in government. Yeah, we're done doing this one too. At least for now. Stand for freedom of speech? Yeah. Fun. We have a basic army. Expand the power grid would not be bad yet, too. And then after that, we did half of this, and... Uh, the waiting game? We'll probably do the waiting game, just get that done as fast as possible. It's not bad either. So now we get 1.78 political power every single day, which is really nice. Yeah, that's actually really, really good. Thank God. Get the best outsiders. I don't want to lose any more stability, though. Bribe the opposition. Decreases political outsiders. Greatly increases cynicism, but we'll never do that one. I'll never touch that one. Music to my ears. If you want to read about that one, please go right ahead. This one's still good to do. Even though I said I wouldn't do this one, but whatever. I lied. It still decreases political outsiders, too, so. Now nah, we're done with that one for now. So up next, I'm going to do more poverty stuff. If we possibly can, yeah. State, expand state welfare programs. Mm, the poverty begins to slowly improve more stability, which is good. Get more GDP, which is also very good. So, actually very, very nice. There goes Germany, doing German things. How bad is the administration on our government right now? It's like army. Minus 40% is not good. Even that stability hurts us too, but whatever. After that, the rising sun. How about Central Asian hinterland? Central Asia is one of the very few paths we have to have to the wider world. Not only will it allow us a path into the giant that is India, but also provides us a buffer with the German control of Persia. It would be beneficial if we were to find allies or partners in the region, which which we might share a mutually defense pact. Additionally, the expansion of our economy in Central Asian markets can make for some tidy profits on both sides of the border. We should attempt to make contact with some Central Asian businessmen and see if they won't be too oppressed to establish trade relationships with us. Not a bad idea. Cool. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, we could, but we'll see. 26% is not very good either. It's fine. And scientific stuff. Which one's... Oh, yeah, probably academic base next. But at the same time, we're going to try to grab more authority, too. We can we can lower popularity, but... Hmm. Not really basing. Nice. Get more output. Output, output, output. Even if we're not making stuff right now and using it. We still need way more output. Hey, if you want to go better agricultural methods, oh, please go right ahead. Where's bread we think the mass mechanization? Awesome. Next commander, there you go. Cool. So much more political power. I should have done that one way earlier, but. I want to get improve the economy as much as possible and stuff like that. So, temporary lower the crisis. Extremism no longer a severe threat. Instability ever present, but not at all, at all crippling anymore. It'd be a stretch to call Central Siberia a beacon of stability, but it's safe to say that the young republic is out of hot water for now. Look at all the political power we get, almost two a day. Many of the former extremists, as well as a number of the sort of independents, have begun accepting and joining our salons each day. With the number of heated, angry arguments between factions threatening to break into the violence decreases, with the number of impassioned but calm and logical discussions between former rivals increasing. It's truly a wonder to see, for example, a summer Solovik from Novosibirsk actually engaging in friendly debate with his colleagues regarding the practice or the place of military intelligence and the Republican security apparatus. How we fail to get men like him on board with their political system? Maybe he would have be, been threatening the state with the military power instead of sitting down for Tina Chan the salon. Much progress is still yet to be made, but slowly there are people all across the realm are integrating into a republic. Finally, maybe a moment to breathe. Yes. Oh, a Kursk. Oh, boy. That's going to be interesting to see, but whatever. Um, I want authority. Greatly increase the Bastillard authority. Well, that is 5% more, which is actually pretty nice. That's not bad. For what we got out of that one. Now with all this political power, now we can actually make ourselves a little bit stronger here. But we're going to promote the elites. Maybe... Increase the political outsiders. You know what? We'll do this one. And we'll recruit the best outsiders as well. We will also do that one too. Whew. I was not feeling good about this one earlier, as you can tell. 
There you go. Not bad. I'm feeling much better though this part of this episode. Oh yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, this costs more steel consumption, but that's okay. How's the economy doing? Debt is spiking up, but our growth is actually not bad. I mean, obviously it could be way better, but that's okay. That's definitely A-OK -okay for, for, from us. 700,000 manpower. That's not bad either. Oh, and that stagnate. It's good, good. Still 1.35 billion. Only 1% 1 1 growth. Free market capitalism, of course. It's an economic system where private enterprises and businesses are free to operate with few or no restrictions from the government. To elaborate, it means that such things are such as prices, costs, and wages are regulated by participants in the market, such as the buyers and sellers. As such, government oversight and regulations are minimized. Popular amongst market liberals of all stripes, it's become one of the most in use systems around the world. Because it's a fun system. The Fallen Eagle. Germany is a nation far gone. Years of economic failure in a recent civil war made Germany into a shadow of what it once was, yet they remain one of the greatest threats to the United Russia's survival. Given that the Republic has been fighting off warlords for several years, focusing mostly on day-to-day -day survival of Siberia, our knowledge on the specifics of Germany and the pact are rather limited. We must endeavor to learn as much as we can about the dying empire and its vassal states, as well as how we can exploit its weaknesses for our own gain. The Rising Sun. Although Japan was never considered to be as great a threat to Russian sovereignty as Germany, they still remain one of the world's few superpowers and their spheres shares. With Russia one of the longest borders of any nation on Earth. We'll send some we should send some diplomats to Tokyo and see what exactly they think of us. And determine whether or not they are a threat. Perhaps if our initial meetings do not go well, we may be able even able to get set up an embassy and parlay our talks into greater discussions about Vladivostok and its potential future ownership. I said I waited for that one, and I'm gonna hold truth to my word hopefully this time. Give it a couple more times. I mean it's good and all for political outsiders and such. I want to save our PP for more than just slowly ex expanding stuff, but connect and expand the resource fields. With improved land connection between our capital and North since so far as they're impossible, we can make one final push for greater resource exploitation in the northern regions. MS are summertime ports? Yes. Reliable power supplies? Yes. And fortify Sibgrad. Well, hold on. I forgot about this one too. Man, we go to war, we're going to have a massive amount of cost here because of all the divisions we're making. You know, let's lower it by one, we'll be fine without it, so... 65, that's actually pretty good. Let's see, what do we have here? Four, oh, we need 75. Yeah, I, I'd rather get the military professionalism. Because while I do want to do all these, like, poverty is most important for me, and then military professionalism so our army does not die against other nations, especially like Yugo does. Of course, in Germany. Germany has, has been always seen as Russia's main enemy. And I'll continue down that path. The German Reich goes against all of democracy's values and subjugated much of Europe. We must make sure the world knows our position on the Reich and that one of enmity. It is one of enmity. Germany is also control of lands we claim to, uh, primarily Moscow. We must continue to press these claims, making sure that the world knows we've not given up on reuniting all of Russians in the Republic. Lastly, maintaining a hostile position with Germany may even increase our relations with both America and Japan. Both rival Germany, and, we'll, and we will be happy to know we don't intend on making good relations with the Germans, after all. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, as they say, usually. While focusing on our friends, we must still focus on our enemies. Western well, outlook. Uh, Eastern possibilities. Although Russia's ultimate goal is to reclaim her Western territories lost in the Second World War, we mustn't disregard our formal holdings in the East. Vladivostok is a wildly valuable prize for us, giving us not only a port in one of the fastest growing economic regions in the world, but also access to lucrative ports, American ports and markets. Additionally, those Eastern holdings could further offer us interest into Asian politics, which might uh, use, which we might use to our advantage in the further dismantling of the already ailing co-prosperity sphere. In any event, we should be standing at the ready to seize on any opportunities that may arise to liberate the Russian Far East. As we're going to say, because I knew it was going to happen, I thought it was going to happen in 67, not 66. Oh boy. That's not good. Fortify Sibgrad. Originally built to be a mining city based on the flawed geological studies in the 30s, the planned city of Sibgrad has been largely abandoned since the 30s with its only foundation remaining. With the possibility of conflict with our eastern neighbor, it would be irresponsible, irresponsible of our us to leave our northern front unguarded. Due to the strategic location, turning Sibgrad into a proper military installation would solve the problem with our northern front being difficult to defend in the event of a war. Oh, yes, please. So, where's the election? Unification, region development. Power power seats, authority. Um, we're getting more political power, first of all, too. Uh, probably want to decrease these guys as much as possible. Getting our, well, uh, can I decrease them? I might want to decrease these guys first. Because it'll give us a slight boost. December's lower authority, but... They have high authority and high popularity. Or we'll just work on these guys instead. Consolidate rule. No popularity, though. Well, it went up by 5%, which is nice. Which means these everyone else has lower authority. We're still lowest, but still not bad. Did I say we were going to have... 
Well, regardless, hopefully we'll be able to stay in position of power anyways, but we'll see. Halfway for... That stuff. 73% is pretty good. Six months of idealism, not bad. And 48% is still a little less than half, but whatever. 1.474, not bad. Economy still growing, which is nice, 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 nice. Rising sun. Eastern possibilities. Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo. The Japanese Empire is the strongest power in the Pacific, meaning it holds great influence over us and may continue to do so as we expand. Even dominating the great target of China, Japan has shown its might to the world. Japan currently dominates Asia, so we cannot appear as a threat to Japanese influence in the region. Japan is also the main rival of America, which controls a lot of the territory America wants to be returned. We should not involve ourselves in this rivalry, as we cannot risk one power's hostility towards us. And despite America being our main ideological partner, as we do share a similar position, political system, Japan is much closer to us and currently holds great influence over our country. Japan's power in Asia may not be trifled with, so we must maintain relations with them no matter what happened in the past and what territory of ours they may control. It's a good plan. Western outlook. Russia's destiny is inextricably to intertwine with the West. The West is our homeland and the homeland of all Russians. It's no longer tolerable to allow German jackboots to tread on Russian soil. Preparations are to be made for the liberation of German-occupied territories in Muscovy, and Ukraine, Austin, and Caucasia. These lands are inherently Russian, and nothing less than their full return will be accepted. Their full future awaits us in Europe, and although the Great Continent will fall, has fallen a long way since Russia was last a nation, we have, we, we have nothing, if not hope, for its recovery. So, when's the election? My bad, I should not have clicked on that then, if it was going to tell us. Um, cross on thinking, but now we're not going to do that one. Decrease political outsiders, maybe? Research is looking like what? Very good. We actually might get it next month. And then we'll do it again. Twenty-four percent is pretty good. Now we are higher than the humanists, which is nice. With this much authority, we might do it one more time and then do more popularity as well. Because we're not the weakest. The humanists are now the weakest, which is nice, but still. And then the waiting game. With our diplomatic office set up in relations established with our neighbors and other nations abroad, we may have the opportunity to begin running down espionage operations. Our spies will infiltrate foreign governments, leaking a steady stream of state secrets which will further the interests of our nation. Every effort should be made to acquire compromising information so that we might better influence leaders in these nations. It's only a matter of time before someone slips up and gives us a piece of information we can use. Ooh, we lose political power. That sucks. There you go. about poverty again. Minus 0.23 is not good enough. Hey, 57%. That is not bad. Anything else going to change here soon? Ooh. Industrial equipment is going to change soon. That's going to take a while. Admin efficiency is not doing too bad either. It's going to take a while for that one. It's fine. Whatever. Almost two a day. Not bad. 1970. Not quite yet. Let's get that one done too. I want to get some planes as well. That'd be nice. Promote the elites. Um, I just want to focus more on this. I want. I definitely want more authority, but more popularity as well. So, one more time, and then do one of these. Cause getting more authority would be good. We got. We got a majority here, and here as well. Hey, we're the most authority now. Look at that. Nice. Next up will be. A, I think if we do that, then we'll do popularity, and then we should be okay. I could be wrong. But we could be okay. Expanding the core. During the Unification Wars, their military wasn't as powerful as their neighbors. That fight against the Separatists and the rogue generals was made difficult by a rogue military. It's been a rough start for a Republican army, but one that must be addressed if we are to defend the territory we must have conquered, and we have conquered, and continue expanding. Our military deficiencies are many, and there, it really isn't a simple fix that will rectify it. The military as a whole must be strengthened. Marshal Shlapshnikov has put forward a set of recommendations on which all salons have been agreed upon. Such improvements will be expensive and time-consuming, but necessary if we wish to one day reunite Russia. Absolutely. Still building more prisons. Nothing like a good prison system. Now we actually just lower your popularity anyways. Um, that actually might be good to do first. Increases, oh, increases, oh, it decreases our authority. Oh, that's not good. But if we do this one, it, this decreases our authority, but if we do this... Or we decrease other people's, that hurts our authority. If we don't do it, it shouldn't hurt our authority, right? Right? I hope so. so. There's a little bit of give and take here and there. Hmm, we'll see. 
Really robotics, not bad. Education, development subsidies. That's quite a bit of political power. And equipment goes to slowly improve. I mean, that gives you a lot, but let's go education. The waiting game, good. Eyes and ears of the Republic. It's both controversial contrary to the values of the Republic, according to some, but the development of our intelligence agencies is tantamount to the continued existence of our beloved state. The Bastillards are given a specific and important mandate. An agency is overseen by a joint committee with members from all four salons. Uh, it'll be used to spy on the actions of our enemies in preparation for ultimate strike against a pretenders to our west and east. Any piece of intelligence we gather surprises. The Republic must know everything about its survival. Our ideals can be disregarded when our survival is at stake. Expanding the core. Not looking great, man. So now we do this, 29%. It does not lower us. We barely get any more populated, but it does help us out a little bit more. At least we got the most here. It barely affected this one, too. That sucks. And we'll, we'll lower our authority, maybe. Because this just greatly decreases. Or potentially greatly decreases. So 29%. Okay, so we're both at what? 29.6. And then 27 points. 27 points. Eh, went, that was not worth it. Oh my god, that was that was so not worth it. I'll probably have to reload the game. But first, let's go and read about Stronger Armor. Uh, let's do this one. Improved Organization. Uniting a region of Central Siberia was no simple task. It required the collective efforts of thousands of soldiers and officers working in tandem in order to subdue the smaller warlords on our borders. The experience these soldiers and officers have gained thus far will prove vital as we attempt to improve our military in the future. We should tap on this experience throughout the promotion of our most experienced and successful officers and soldiers. Additionally, we should begin interviewing our soldiers to see what they believe needs improvement in their armed the forces. Common Core reforms. Shapshnikov stacked the papers on his desk and leaned back. He actually managed to get all four of the salons on board with his reforms somehow. All was a norm, a few backroom meetings, cups of tea, and IOUs were necessary to unite each salon under his ideas for the military. But, at the very least, Shapshnikov acknowledged that I all reasonably good military plans regardless of their ideological differences. The behind-the-scenes work was behind him now, but ahead came the actual task of serious military reform. Shapshnikov was aware of the importance of his job as a core Republican army would serve as the foundation and bulwark of the Republic's defenses. Neither he nor the government could afford to let these pesky squabbles hinder the modernization and reform of the military, lest everything he and the people of Central Siberia had worked for would be lost. At least we all agree on something. Better weapons. The rifle is the most important tool the modern soldier has at his disposal, and the quality of a soldier's rifle is as important as the training he receives to use it. Even the greatest soldier armed with a musket wouldn't be wouldn't be able to do half as much damage in the field as an untrained conscript with a Kalashnikov. The more lead one can saturate the battlefield with, the greater the chance that something or someone is going to be hit with said lead. Our enemies across borders are surely working on newer and more advanced versions of the rifles they already have, and if they, we allow them to advance significantly past us, we may find ourselves overpowered in the field. Also, we did have elections like immediately, like after I like, faded out, faded in. And yeah, for this one, attrition planning is so good. Um, we actually got nine more seats for the Bastillards, of all things, which is actually really nice. Offensive strategy G is just not worth it. I loved minus 10% supply consumption, but it's not. It's just not good enough. It's already been gone four years since Pasternak ended the provisional government, and the first selection of our new system could take place. Four years of great changes for our republic. Of hope, dreams, victory, and defeats. For better, for ill. The current leading salon has to stand down for new elections, bringing with it its unique con constitution. It's still too early to tell the old government will be given a second mandate to continue the program. More of a new salon will have to manage rivals, ideologies, projects, and legacies. Three of the candidates of the 63 elections stand again for the presidency. Lakachev of the December Salon, Sakharov of the Modernist Society, and Harms of the Bachelor Society. Dmitry Shostakovich's health being too poor, his friend and protege Moisey Feinberg is picking up the torch of the Humanist Salon. It's too early to tell who has advanced, but going to the election, one party has been doing unusually well lately in the campaign. Which salon do, uh, campaign, campaign do you want to follow? The best of odds. Nice. And we're looking out for poverty here. We've got to stamp out poverty as much as possible. As uh, we're still going to be doing a lot of stuff here. Expand the university system. Do even question things like that. Expand, expand, expand. Because, oh. Oh, crap. We should not have done that, maybe. Campaign on Tomsk. Alright, not bad. Greatly increased. So we definitely want to do this. Now we're going to save all the political, political power for that stuff. Because now we're still doing this, too. It's not bad. 3.43, 3 not bad. That's pretty good, actually. It's 67. Happy 67, everybody. Basic motorized, improved motorized, very nice. Better weapons, thank you very much. And stronger armor. One of the most important lessons learned from the Second World War was the necessity of a modern tank corps. Panzers with more powerful guns and stronger armor than we'd ever seen before broke through our lines as if they were made of putty. We face similar difficulties today. The warlords who have managed to acquire some portion of the former Soviet Union's tank stock power figured out some way to produce their own, or often the warlords causing the guns the most damage and casualties. An armored corps will be vital in ensuring a continued military supremacy. As I'm pushing right now, as you can tell, very heavily for all that stuff, so. Um, ooh, a little bit of lag. Auto saving. 
pretty normal. Um, get get a lot of good engineers. Get some better planes too. There you go. Tomsk. Voting campaign. Increases. Oh, we can increase idealism here too. It's not bad. Uh, actually, where, where are we doing really well? Because if we, do, we don't do well here, uh, I will come back and redo this and just totally not use cons commands, but still. Popularity is still not bad, though. Is that worth it? Mm, I don't know. We got the most authority and most upper house seats, which is really nice, but still. Campaign on Tomsk. Voting suppression. Yeah, no. So which area has the most votes for us? Probably, honestly, yeah, Tomsk. Tomsk is not bad for us. Tomsk or maybe Novosibirsk, maybe. But we'll read about the Republican Eagles. For decades, Lupop has unleashed hellfire upon her Russian brethren in the West. There hasn't a single Russian in those lands without a story to tell about the bombings. Men and women swept up in firestorms in cities. Villagers seeing the village entirely destroyed in secret carpet bombings. Oil fields alive for days after strategic bombing. All stories that, we, that support the common logic. If we lose the war in the air, we lose the war and we lose it quickly. Aerial supremacy is of the utmost importance if we were to reunite Russia and one day combat Germany currently. Our air force is a joke. We need to produce more planes and better quality planes if we were to catch up. And we need to do so quite, quite rapidly. Yeah, you can do it in Tom's, that's fine. Let's go to 53, 53%, hopefully. Enough of is not bad. Kim Rubble, we get suppressing Kim Rubble, that'd be good. But I just don't want to increase cynicism too much. Wow. Not bad. Economy? Two billion in debt? Well, that's fine, whatever. Growth is not as good as it should be, but whatever. Minus 0.21? Not bad. Karmic looks like he's doing really well. Um, what was the red one here? Is that us? I don't think so, yeah. Jostakovich, we're authoritarian de Democrats. 164, what? Campaign, where? Hey, that's not bad. Um, probably Kimarovo next. Ooh, we're not looking good there at all. Holy crap. Maybe not. Jesus Christ, it's so bad. We are so low in some of these places. That one's not terrible. It's really god awful. Maybe Novosibirsk. Eh, 31% is not bad. Maybe do Novosibirsk next. We'll try that one. Oh boy. Republican Eagle steel caravans. It's not bad either. Get more roads. Actually, that's really good, too. Every army marches on his stomach, and if you can't supply an army's ravenous appetite, it'll die. Living in the rough and varied lands of Russia, logistics can be a major challenge. Spy lines often run long and snake-like, leaving them vulnerable to attack. The terrain and weather can also make transportation of materials and goods a slow and arduous task. With snowstorms and mud, a very, very real and present threat. Mitigating these threats through supply lines through the use of new technology is vital in this regard. Improved trucks with all-terrain capability alongside trains, which can prove the ever-larger loads will surely increase their logistical capabilities. Victory for the Decimus Factory. Congratulations, look at Jeff. Well, if you don't know about that, please go ahead. But hey, he's not going to win in the end. Well, would you look at that? Victory for the Bachelor Society. And it's not so strange to see a, a sight to see absurdist poet Daniel Combs winning the presidency after the Bachelor Society's well oiled campaign. Despite the legacy of the worker uprising, the Republic citizens have given their confidence to the Bastelot's Great Duma and its powerful appointed upper chamber. In return for the strange contract of a democratically chosen authoritarian government, the people of the Republic expect economic growth led by central planning, a government willing to monitor the nation for fascist and communist agitators, and a pragmatic foreign policy that seeks to ensure Russian democracy no future no matter what. On military affairs, comms as I said time and again the importance of using modern firepower and engineering to build a wall between the free society and its enemies. The Iron Republic's President and the Great Duma are on the march. Congratulations to Khams. And I totally didn't use Khams commands. Totally didn't use Khams commands to make sure that we could actually win there because, oh my gosh, it took me four or five attempts to do so. But don't worry why we're so gray up here and so gray over here or so gray over here with 58% voter turnout, 38% voter turnout, 29% and 36% voter turnout. Don't question it, please. You won't like the answer in the end. But we still got to do Republican Eagles and, of course, a Republican Vanguard, which would be fine, fine, fine. Totally didn't use Khams commands. Oh, I also did, I guess, eh, I'm not even paying attention to this too much. We do have 32 divisions here, which is pretty darn nice. And you know what, since we're here anyways. Hmm. I hope this gives us more growth. 4.6% is not enough. But we'll get there in time. Oh, steel care vents. So minus 0.2 is still pretty good, though. Other than that, I mean, it, it literally took me 4 or 5 attempts to get, so that the Bastelots could still win. 
I hate using cost commands, but sometimes you just have to do so. Rudimentary manufacturing lines. Military procurement cost. More factory output. Oh, better construction speed. Better consumer goods factory production. Or production factor. More growth. Oh, yes, please. Very nice. Very, very nice. Republican Vanguard. The army is arguably the single most important apparatus of state. Not only does it protect the nation from outside threats but like the roving warlord or war bands of Russia or more organized hostile warlord states on our borders, but also provides an important interior defense, defending the government from subversives within. These subversives may have any number of ill intentions. We do not know why, only that they're there. They intend to subvert democracy for their own aims, whatever they may be. Only through the, only through the strengthening of the army may we safeguard ourselves from these enemies at home and abroad. Yes, please. The Petrov Salon, realization of industry. Anatoly Petrov had a long last managed to come to terms with his political realizations, or rather, the lack of them. The unification campaigns that remove what now recognized blind faith of the youth, uh, blind faith in the Republic, blind faith in then President Pasternak, blind faith in the salons and their tenants. That was gone, and he knew it was reflected in the reluctance to involve himself in the family's frequent political discussions. His father, however, seemed oblivious to his son's inaction, taking great pride in characterizing the accomplishments of the vast large of the kitchen table, ever since their electoral victory in the implementation of the campaign promises. Their adaptation of the four -year, old four-year plans, expansion of the welfare net, and expansion of entrepreneurship were all policies that he firmly believed had revolutionized the Republic. Every time they were brought up, his mother's side, his sister began countering, and Anatoly himself remained silent. He knew that now, only subscribing to one ideology or system was inherently flawed, forever constrained to offer only one lens through which he, to view the world, and he had chosen to no longer let himself be shackled like the rest of his family was. He instead approached life as a free man, and he would, instead of analyzing every situation through the lens of politics, simply decide upon what he thought was morally good, what would help the people in the moment the most. It wasn't naive enough to think that he would always make the right choice, or that he would not be unconsciously influenced by the perspectives and beliefs of those around him, but to know that he would be able to sleep at night free of endless questions, and that would be enough to be enough. A new system for a new man. And uh, Republican Vanguard was, good, of course, a good dude as well, so. Fighters, steel caravans are actually very strong. All that bonus is super, 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 super nice. 73, 73, 73. Eh, I'll do 73. There you go. How are we doing with this stuff as well? We've got plenty of artillery for now, but you never know in the future. We need way more anti air. We need way more of this stuff as well, so. Please, please, please. And what else are we going to do here? Also, like I said, we totally didn't use cons commands, so. Um, we totally have a lot of authority here, but if you'd like to read about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Factory complexes? Oh, awesome. So good. Uh, yeah, don't look at that. We have so much authority here. 40%, Jesus. Um, well, we get about 4.5%, not bad. Weaken them, weaken them. Popularity isn't as high as it was for other nations or other factions here, but that's alright. That's A-OK. -okay. Idealism could be a little better, but that's okay as well. Anything over here? There you go. Now we max it out. 5% growth. That's not bad. That's really not bad at all. Supplies is over a billion, so no issues there at all, too. The new Republican Army. Air Force, Air Superiority, ooh, Air Supremacy. Do we need helicopters, but air attackers, bombers. And we're not gonna we're not really using this stuff either. Ground support is actually really nice. Plus air support attack. Just strap bombers, cast, helicopters, helicopters. Now what does it mean by helicopters? Does that include attack helicopters? It does include attack helicopters, which we do want to use eventually, so you know what's go we'll go global force. Which doesn't make sense for us, but whatever. We're still gonna do it anyways. Hmm. Less production units. So defensive doctrine versus counterattack doctrine. Combine operations. Oh, we can still do that one too. Cool. Well, we're doing strategic theorem, so we probably won't go with that one. Defensive doctrine. A declaration of war against a nation is simply the acknowledgement of a relationship our nations have already shared. There's no peace amongst the warlords of Russia, only prolonged truces. This is the mindset with which we must approach all of our neighboring nations, be it during peacetime or war. Our nation will be impenetrable, whether to raids coming across the border during times of peace or to full frontal assault during times of war. Every meter of land they take from us will demand thousands of their soldiers, just as every man we lose will demand ten more of theirs. We'll make attacking our, our land as attractive as a prospect as invading Germany might seem to Finland. Nice. Naval Doctrine? Subs? Sure, why not? Anything here to get any better poverty yet? No. Yeah, we, yeah, yes. Yes, we do. Install poverty relief programs. Yes, sir. Minus point one now. Could be better. Could be even better. Which means you get the other one, too, eventually, too. Which would be very, very good. Any spare planes? Pre oh, we've got transport planes. I didn't know we had transport planes. Okay. Republican Vanguard, Defensive Doctrine, 
New Republican Army. The Bastards believe in having an army that is efficient and effective, not large and flashy. For this M. Their forms aim to shape the military into a small professional force that will be free of the populist agitation and capable of protecting the Republic from internal and external threats. Instead of wasting resources on making the army offensively oriented, we'll invest to a degree in both artillery and fortifications. We'll let our enemies use up their own resources as attacking us where it doesn't hurt until they are weak enough for us to strike back when they're down. There'll be no waste or pomp in this new Republican army. Not a bad idea. Simple and efficient. We like it. Matryoshka preparations. You don't get to pick what bad things happen to you. An obvious statement, but pertinent nonetheless. At any hour, any or any of, or all of our enemies may choose to storm the border and go to war with us. We must be prepared for any and all situations that could come our way. Defensive lines upon in defensive lines. Counterattack plans for every counter or every possible nightmare, nightmare scenario. A plan for every possible type of war that may come our way. It's far, far better to organize such plans now than or organize or agonize without them later. Well, yes, rapidly improve. Yes, please. Bobby relief. Uh, how is the research going? Five? It's not good enough. And we don't really need that one too much. It's only 25, though. 25 is pretty good. Come on, where's the next one? What do you want for agriculture, too? We're in mass mechanization? We need modern ones. That should be even better. Actually, what are we building up? Are we building up roads? We're building up the prison system still. Alright. Azanovsky? Wow, plus 82%. Jeez, that's really strong. A little bit of lag because of saving. It's fine, whatever. Uh, and this is, as you can tell, this is a very long video. Like, I didn't realize it was going to be this long, but whatever. Uh, what's this say? Lezo Asinovsky. There it is. There you go. Okay, not bad. Expansive doctrine. Very good. Um, import heavy machinery, maybe. Equipment. Yeah, it's not popping up yet. Uh, what is funny, anyways? Oh, wait. Well, that one does poverty, too. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Poverty getting improved with the agricultural one. Degrading enemy performance. Or endless material. Yeah, I'll go probably go with endless material. 225%. Yeah, we're not using tactical bombers, so I don't see the point of doing that one. Material is cheaper than the lives of our elite army. <clears throat> we can use our vast industrial mines to shield up our troops on the front lines. Artillery shells will blot out the skies of our enemies as we we'll obliterate advancing armies at a distance. And should these armies manage to get close enough to attack us, they will only be met by miles of concrete bunkers and spraying out metric tons of lead each and every hour. Our nation's factories will put out concrete and steel until the whole of Russia's blood dry before succumbing to enemy invasion. I almost forgot about this. More rule. 10%? Hey, 5.5%? Nice. Better than what we had earlier. And there's state welfare. God dang, we should have waited. Slowly improve. Of course, that's not as good as the one we just had, so. Hey, 5.8%. 5, 5 We're trying to max out our growth now as all possible. One and a half billion a year? Nice. Very nice. More than two a day? Very good. We need more idealism as well, but whatever. We'll get there. 17 months have passed. Techno music. If you want to read about that one, please go right ahead. Why do people have to ruin everything? Why do young people have to ruin everything? Why do people have to ruin things in general? Questions. To the jugular. <clears throat> the Germans named their tanks after panthers and tigers with good reason. Much like the fearsome feline predators, our tanks imposing speed and attack can rip through enemy lines with ease. We learned of their striking power years ago on the battlefields of the Eastern Front, and we've learned it here in the wastes of Russia again and again as we encounter ever larger, more industrialized foes, however. Where the enemies blood drive the equipment and manpower by the rest of our army, our tanks will know only decisive blows as we crush enemy resistance once and for all. Oh, look at that lag. What's going on? 67? It's not Africa, is it? See, welfare, yes, please. Yes, please. Minus 0.3. Oh, it's it's uh, Europe. Of course it would be Europe. That is so nice. Oh, my goodness. Five a month. Seven. Oh, that's looking so good. Oh, my goodness. So good. Uh, what was I thinking of? Yeah, I'll probably more of this up, too. Eventually. We'll get more of this. Get more of this. Up approval, approval. Not bad. Actually, can we do it now? No, we can't. Decisions, decisions. Always oh, plenty of decisions. It's only 67, which is good, too. Give me get some more idealism as well. It's only at 71%, but it shouldn't be going down, right? Shouldn't go down. Too much, at least. Hopefully, get some uh, returning expectors. No, the foreign people. Foreign people. To the jugular, my friends. A little more debt, but whatever. It's fine. Actually, we haven't done artillery at all, have I? Wait, where did artillery go? Oh, they completely reworked this! 
Well, maybe not rework, but it's definitely different than before. That's one of the things I've never actually touched. I'm not even touching the tanks anymore, because cause they're okay, but... I don't know, they're just not as exciting as they used to be. But getting better artillery is really, really important. Cool, what is this? Nothing is forgotten. Police with security service. That's not bad, I like that. All is known. Ooh. Let's go with this one. Just because we're going to the left side here. Nothing is forgotten. I like the more worse, but we could actually use this more. And gets us better combat abilities, but whatever. Russian intelligence gathering operations for vital force states continue survival. Not only do such operations provide us with information on what our enemies are doing abroad, such as their plan invasion, technological developments, and political movements, but they also help to ensure domestic safety and stability at home. There are any number of agitators, dissidents, and insurgents within our borders, and even without that, with, even within our army that, should they be given the chance, will tear down everything we've created thus far. Our intelligence services must know everything to prevent such a thing from happening. Pretty much. Pretty much. Actually, since we're here anyways, go ahead and increase idealism anyways, because it's not going down, but we might... Oh, it is going down. It is actually literally literally going down. Promote the elites, recruit the best outsiders. So. Q in Manchuria. Not bad, not bad. And we will bury them. More daily... Oh, more daily army XP, that's really good. You get more, slightly more organization, less recruitable population factor, which is fine, whatever. Better recovery rate, better war support, attack, and training time. I like that one a lot, and that's the entire focus tree here, too, so. Not bad. And we pretty much kept up on all, almost all the stuff anyway, so that's actually really good, too. Actually, let's take a double look here. Um, I think I, I think I remember what I screwed up on here. Early fighters, helicopters are fine for now. Actually, early helicopters. Well, we're going to need better transport anyways. Cass, we're doing okay-ish on. God, we need more production units. Good, goodness gracious. Ah. That's what we're missing. Early fighters. I want more. More, 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 please. Iron four instructors next. Get more daily iron XP. You lose some political power, but that's okay. Yes, good. All is known, and then we will bury them. Should our elite units in the army and the air force fail to subdue the enemy and our army's push back far into Tomsk, we will unleash our final weapon: concrete bunkers, miles upon miles of them, spanning in every direction, blocking our enemy's paths and corralling them into slaughterhouses of our own design. A wall of reinforced rebar, unassailable by all but the heaviest and most powerful armored vehicles. More resources should be put towards our defenses and securing our borders. If we can't drown them in bullets, we'll bury them in concrete. But that should be the end of this episode. It's been quite a long one, but if you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll probably have to end up going to war with Yagoda, and unifying the rest of Russia, which are still struggling quite a bit in both far western Russia and western Siberia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.